Hello everybody, I'm Piglet here, and I'm Duffy Duck here, we are, we are from the likes of the Maxi Toys, sorry. And ladies and gentlemen, we'll present to you our brand new Let's Play for our YouTube channel, alongside while Sonic is about to be doing NES Remix 2 at some point, which at the moment he's done three parts. So as for this time forward, we're actually going to be getting to the next iOS game. Now, much like how it does it in My Little Pony Harmony Quest, that um, the first ever controversial Let's Play that Let's Play we did, um, sort of tackle. I'm presuming Mario and Sonic did manage to tackle for that game during the likes of a couple of months ago. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. So, for this specific reason, for this point, ladies and gentlemen, especially noticeable if you're a brony out there, we're about to present to you this particular Let's Play right here. <laughs> It was an ordinary day in Ponyville. So ordinary, in fact, that Discord was a little bored. Even though he knew it was off limits, he decided to sneak into Twilight's library and check out some books. There were so many! Where to begin? It wasn't long before a large, leather-bound volume caught his eye. It was big and beautiful and was calling to him irresistibly. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is our second controversial Let's Play we're going to be doing for our channel, and this is used to be the second game in new forms of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic game on the application devices. This is called Rainbow Runners, or to be more accurately, My Little Pony Rainbow Runners. Now, it, the developers of this game develops the exact same people how it does in the forms of Harmony Quest, and as you can tell, the gameplay aspect of the forms of um, Rainbow Runners is actually a lot different this time around compared to how it does in the forms of Harmony Quest. Now, you remember how in Harmony Quest, and all you have to do is basically we need to get all the way up to the changeling before you get the, uh, the stained glass window pieces back? all the forms of the elements of Harmony back. Um, this time around though, although it's basically, it's still a on rails uh, type of gameplay, there's no way we can backtrack for that certain point, because uh, just like how it does in Sonic and the Secret Rings, and especially knows about in Sonic and the Black Knight, um, you're completely on rails for the entire time, so this means you're continuously moving, so... Yeah, from the start though, is the fact that, if you couldn't tell already, I need to get used to how the fact that this game does have a little bit, bit more uh, control um, functions, just like how it does it in Elements of- oh no, Harmony Quest, sorry. I kept on thinking of something else for a moment ago, but anyways. Um, yeah, so as far as you probably already know, is the fact that um, uh, this game did manage to came out- I'm assuming this game came out about a year ago at this point, because uh, you know how the fact that My Little Pony Friendship is Magic does have a new logo design, and oh my god, it looks like everything else is entirely, um, colorless around. So yes, this is what, how basically the main plot of this game is focuses on this time around, though, is the fact that we don't have to worry about, um, Queen Chrysalis, unlike how it does in the forms of Harmony Quest, and especially noticeable how the fact that we don't have to worry about the changelings. Instead, the entire plot is focusing on this time is the fact that the main six it's up to them, is about to be able to actually just to see every single part of Ponyville, as you can tell, is completely um, lifeless. Even then though, it doesn't have, it doesn't have any color. Um, this story does remind me of something almost related to Paper Mario Stick uh, Color Splash. I, I kept on thinking of something else for a moment ago, so I really do apologize for that. But then again, it's usually about time to able to actually get this thing started from this point in early, early once. Even then though, at the moment, we can only select one level at the moment. No two forms of that particular building right from the start though, so... Now, normally, in terms of the level the level progressioning in this game this time around, there's the fact that there are no uh, different locations we can actually get into. Instead, this is basically based off, um... We're still exploring for Ponyville, but except rather than just actually traveling to different, uh, d different locations, Instead, you actually tr you have to traverse through different areas, so that's a little bit different. So from the start, you can actually select up to once again the main six. Now, in comparison to how it does it in Harmony Quest, that normally you start things off with um, Twilight Sparkle, Pinkie Pie, and Applejack, and then you have to unlock Fluttershy, Rainbow Dash, and Rarity on Harmony Quest. 
This time around though, you start the game off when you simply select Twilight Sparkle because she is the main um, hero after all, a heroine as far as I might say so, and especially Fluttershy. Though, Fluttershy was unlocked from the start this time around though, instead of like, you actually have to unlock her in Harmony Quest. Now, much like how it does in Harmony Quest though, actually let's get this thing started by the forms of uh, Twilight Sparkle, because technically, we've already um, uh, played as Fluttershy in the forms of uh, the tutorial sequence of this game, so Actually, before we get to this little uh, unlockable requirements of this game, as far as you might guys already know, or the bronies out there, um, yeah, let's get into the actual gameplay aspect in the forms of Rainbow Runners. As you expect it, it's a 2D side-scrolling platformer, instead of like, well, just keep on mashing the jump button, or keep mashing the, um, the run button the entire time. Now, this almost exactly feels uh, exactly similar to how it does in the forms of Super Mario Run, the most uh, well-famous Nintendo application games at the moment on the iOS, which, you know, that game was almost two years old at this point, which even then, though, I'm still looking, still looking forward to see how there's some new updates and new forms of Super Mario Run. It's mostly noticeable with new forms of new, uh, playable characters that's been showcased. Well, last time they already showcased the new playable characters is the forms of Daisy back in Junior Likes of 2017, among with, uh, Remakes 10 mode, which is usually as far as you might think, so... Anyways though, so as you can see there, that Twilight Sparkle actually got herself her ability, but it forms off. Well, I don't I don't really sure of how the fact that what these uh, magical powers are named for. And speaking of such though, is that every time when we actually looked at Twilight Sparkle in this game particularly, um, she always just stares ahead on the actual screen instead of like uh, just, you know, traversing forward whenever when her eye contact was actually concentrating on the optical level itself or something like that. Again. We don't know entirely sure, but even then, though, let's just, uh, get into this next section right there, so... Yeah, because even then, though, we're still traversing through Ponyville, after all, so... Yeah, as you can tell right there, back into what I was saying by the forms of the plot of this game, and, uh, let's go ahead and select, uh, Pinkie Pie this time around, though, because, again, we've already select, uh, P uh, Fluttershy from the start, because even then, though, that's the part of the tutorial sequence of how the fact that how the game mechanics work, it's basically noticeable with these uh, rainbow power abilities, which even then, if you, um, for the for those of you the bronies out there who ever watched um, um, season four finale, that um, you know how the rainbow powers works is the fact that after when you uh, watch the um, the finale of season four, which is the forms of Twilight's Kingdom Part Two, which is totally amazing by the way, because even then uh, that, you know, it has like a reference to Dragon Ball Z or Dragon Ball Super at this rate, and even then though, uh, that um, in the end, uh, the main six did manage to transform into ourselves into um, the rainbow power variations, which even then are uh, basically, uh, you know, the hairstyles and especially their main transform into a little bit of a colorful, vibrant looking type of syndrome like that, so as you can tell already, that Pinkie Pie's ability, especially noticeable with her rainbow power ability, is the forms of double jump. Or even in this case, multitude of jumps or something like that, because you can able to um, do multitude of jumps, just like how it does in the forms of, um, I was classified for saying, uh, you know, uh, what's, what's the game I was going to think of by the forms of the double jump ability that already has been? Well, I would say, um, Daisy from Super Mario Run. Yeah, that's what I was trying to think of anyway, because Daisy has the exact same ability as how it does it for Pinkie Pie in this particular game, so... Now, in order to actually complete the levels, is the fact that we have to basically just, you know, jump through that little, um, rainbow portal, and then after we do so, then the entire, um, sections of Ponyville is being restored within colors, so that makes it pretty obvious with this particular situation, notice? Yeah, Discord is uh, telling us the fact that uh, there's actually this little icon in the bottom right corner, which we're about to investigate right about now. So basically, every time you're collecting one of those little rainbow power orbs, this means you can actually get into your cell's level up uh, grinding, which even then, there are, I would say about um, six levels or something like that, in order to actually level up your character. Like basically, we got Applejack's um, Apple Strike, which is her ability which uh, we'll get to her as soon as we get to the next level, and also uh, Fluttershy's super special ability is uh, Super Flight, and of course Pinkie Pie's was Mega Bounce, uh, Rainbow Dash is Rain Boom, and Magnetic Field for Rarity, and of course uh, Magic Blaster by the forms of um, Twilight Sparkle, because 
Well, usually she always lo loves to learn magic herself, with, you know, some specific abilities and all that stuff. And speaking of which, let's go ahead and select uh, Mapplejack next. Let's see if then now that we can able to actually go through characters in a particular order. Now, unlike the ones in, um, you know, in Harmony Quest, that normally you have to take uh, two ponies with you, or in this case, uh, three, four, five, or six ponies, depends on what level progression you're in. So that way we've been able to actually finish the level normally. Uh, as you can see right there, Applejack's special move is the forms of the Apple Strike, which basically functions like a, uh, I would say a, uh, a rain ability, but it forms of Castlevania, uh, Symphony of the Night. Whenever you, um, select, uh, Richter, or even in this case, if you actually, um, start the game off with the forms of Richter Billmart, that, uh, basically you can able to actually use that little, uh, Strike of Rain or all that stuff. Which, I have to admit though, right away though, that is a screen note, because you can basically destroy everything. Speaking of which, there aren't any enemies around in here in this particular, uh, locations like this, except for hazards, mainly bottomless pits, and especially noticeable with these two mini, uh, obstacles, mainly these little, uh, uh, stones, thorns, and, uh, most importantly, or most annoyingly, mud. Now, Mud doesn't really do much in terms of damage-wise, but it's, instead it actually just managed to slow you down for a bit, which even then though, that you can definitely tell why when we, when we get into the, uh, the latest few levels, mainly, uh, well, some other challenging levels. Although, speaking of challenge, uh, this game is still rather easy compared to those new forms of um, um, Harmony Quest, because as you expected, this game was targeting audiences kids once again, but, except the fact they actually add some bit of a challenge though, to able to dodge as many hazards as possible, and especially noticeable by the forms of, um, some bottomless pits everywhere, so, okay, so that's Magic Blast for, um, um, Twilight Sparkle, so, the next level we're gonna be in into, we're gonna be selecting Rarity, because we have to level her up in the forms of Magnetic Field, which basically functions the same way as how it does it in the forms of, you know, Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and Knuckles when it comes to the Electric Shield, and especially noticeable recently Sonic Mania Electric Shield, which basically tracks um, some of these uh, little Rainbow Power Orbs to you, which even then though, that still Rarity is my favorite lovely young character, which still as I love her so much. Oh no, especially I love Twilight Sparkle as well, which even then though, um, I had a crush on her. Yeah, I know, especially those thought that I was a, um, a crush on Rarity for the most part, though. I gotta tell you that, Daffy. You are no big words because you always love her so much. So anyways, though, as you can see right there, if you actually use the rainbow power on your forms of Rarity, she can perform, like, electric shield, stuff like that. You know, just like how it does in the ones in, um, you know, Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and Knuckles and Sonic Mania electric, um, shield, which, you know, tracks for these little, uh, magic power orbs, or the rainbow power orbs, um, as much as you like, so, anyways though, so we might try to get as many, um, uh, rainbow power orbs as possible, although if not, then there's no way we can backtrack for certain points notice, but, um, oh yeah, we totally forgot about this little shiny part right there, it functions the same way as how it does in the forms of, um, oh, we've lost a, a little bit of health there. Oh yeah, I should probably mention right from the start though, is that this game now actually introduces health. So, um, every time you start the level off, uh, you usually start things off with 3 health. But if you take more damage by the forms of too many obstacles or hazards or anything like that, if you manage to get hit by those or fall down to the bottomless pit as I mentioned earlier, um, you lose a bit of health. And if you lose all 3 health, then you basically kick down the level. So you have to restart the entire level again if you manage to able to come back for it. Um, Speaking of levels, I don't think this level uh, of these levels themselves aren't nearly as long as compared to it does in Harmony Quest to me though, because normally it depends on what we um yeah, quick edit right there folks, because uh, there's one annoying thing about this game though, whenever you start the game off, um there's this really annoying pop-up adverse all over the place, which oftentimes it can help me at some points, like certain games like you know, Sonic Forces Speed Battle and all that stuff. But games like this can really drag on for a few seconds notice, so anyways. So the next character we're going to be using is the forms of Rainbow Dash, aka the last of the main six we're going to be playing as for the time being. Now obviously if you couldn't tell already that um, much like how it does the forms of um, Harmony Quest, uh, Netheration makes a return in this game, and uh, much like how it does the forms of Harmony Quest game, we have to turn the Netheration off because sometimes it gets really, uh, 
Well, I hate to be bullshit, brutally honest here, but I find it kind of an irritating uh, voice to be honest, because even then, uh, we much rather uh, commentating on the informs of the actual gameplay itself. Well, usually for the understandable few points, for, uh, you know, when it comes to target audiences for kids, obviously, but since we're still a brony, since even then, no, back in Dream Likes of, you know, five years ago at this rate, so... Yeah, today was actually forms of um, the 4th of July, by the way, for those of you who managed to able to double check on the dates and stuff like that. Which, you know, Sonic is still working on the um, NES remakes too. And then at some point in during the likes of uh, the very end of July, I need to possibly work it up on um, Sonic Unleashed DLC stuff, because after all, as you probably guys already know, I've recently finished up with the forms of the main story of the forms of Sonic Unleashed for the Xbox 360 slash PlayStation 3 during about a couple of days ago. So you can not know that I need to get into that game's DLC, but first off I need to be able to play for the PlayStation 3 version first before I need to get some a lot of practice with, not just in terms of the actual level design that it forms of um, DLC stuff after all, but it's also because of how the fact that I need to get used to with um, uh, the controls and physics worked out, but normally that's how it goes for me though, so... Anyway, so, so now we're done with that, and let's go ahead and level up, um... Yeah, let's go ahead and level up on Twilight Sparkle's Magic Blast, see if now that we can able to actually just, uh... Plus the five for able to actually level these, uh, ponies up. Yeah, every time you level up these ponies, uh, basically, they can actually get ourselves a metal increases, so... And let's go level up Fluttershy, because we might actually get onto that particular or, uh, corresponding order again, but in forms of the main six playables debut, because, uh, we, we basically pretty much play, um, all the main six, pretty much. Let's go back to the beginning, in the forms of Twilight Sparkle in the next section, so... Now, if you can tell already, that unlike how it does in the forms of Harmony Quest, that, um, you know, Mario and Sonic did recently did manage to done that particular Let's Play back in February, which is about five months ago. Um, basically, as you can see right now, or as you can clearly, clearly hear at the moment, we can now able to actually put up a music background, because for some reason, um, I don't know if you noticed for this point, folks, especially noticeable if you're, if you're a brony out there, for those of you who haven't played Harmony Quest before, um, there's actually this little update that's been usually just added up now, but in forms of Harmony Quest, that uh, we can no longer going to be able to actually put our customizable music in the forms of um, any other kind of franchises, franchises anymore, excluding the likes of this game, which to me I found was a little bit of a problematic in my opinion, just because although we'd like to actually just be too sure to able to put a back, the actual background music up, but much like how it does in Harmony Quest though to me, um, it's pretty much generic as it is, just like how it does in the rest of Sonic Boom, Rise of Blue, because of that shit, I'm freaking... I'm sorry, I just really... Yeah, I know, you still, uh, can't stand Sonic Boom, Rise of Blue, though, because, you know, the game's all glitchy best and all that stuff, and plus it's really, really buggy. Well, unless, you know, Patches did manage to be able to release that during about not too while ago, naturally, though, so... Anyways, though, so now we've finished up this particular level right there, and uh, now let's move on to the next level, which, speaking of which, we're going to have to select Fluttershy for this particular next section of the level, or in this case, the next section of Ponyville, because, um, you know, it doesn't have any uh, uh, locales to be able to actually explore in, like, for instance, in the forms of uh, My Little Pony Harmony Quest, that usually travels around uh, six different locations, but in forms of, well, obviously Ponyville, Everfree Forest, uh, the Crystal Empire, and, um, what else is on there? Um, Cloudsdale, Mainhaddon, and Canterlot. Because in this game, this time around, though, it's just mainly focusing on Ponyville, and that's about it. So, there aren't any, uh, Mainhaddon areas around here, so let's just go ahead and just, uh, get on with this level. So, yeah, basically, uh, Fluttershy's Super Flight, uh, base or Flight, even, is the fact that you can able to actually use the touch screen and to be able to actually slide the actual uh, iPad or the iPhone, depends on what devices you're using. And basically, every time you actually tilt the, uh, your finger onto that specific screen, uh, it all depends on how the fact that if, uh, she actually flies um, a crease or decreases every time when you actually just swipe the, uh, the screen of your iPhone or your iPad, because, you know, uh, they're all made in Apple, obviously, so, you know. So, um, 
Yeah, there's not much else we can say about the informs of uh, My Little Pony uh, Rainbow Runners, because even then... Um, let's get into the actual um, continuation of the actual in-game plot out of the way, because basically, um, Discord did manage to um, uh, get inside uh, Twilight Sparkle's um, Castle Kingdom, uh, which basically, you know, represents by the informs of after the events of the informs of, you know, Season 4 after all in the finale. Especially those more in the later seasons, including the likes of recently in episode, uh, season 8 now, they actually now built up a score, in this case a friendship score, which is pretty cool. Yeah, because even then uh, they actually add something new to the table, which even then uh, that might be sounds, you know, pretty uh, promising, especially those more of the fandom out there are still continuously going. So that should be good to go for this little parts notice. So anyways, now we're done with this particular part of the pony go out the way, and now we'll move on to the next. And, um, since we still got ourselves a little arrow lighting thing shown up, and yes, much like how it does the informs of Harmony Quest, we still need to able to actually require to play certain characters in their specific levels. Like, for instance, in this next level right there, we have to mainly focusing on playing as, uh, Twilight Sparkle, and then vice versa for the main six as well. So let's go ahead and level up uh, Pinkie Pie's Mega Bounce. And um, let's go ahead and select um, this particular locale right over there. Yeah, so that way we can able to actually, you know, go for those uh, main six ponies in a particular order. It's been a long time since we're actually playing a My Little Pony game like this. Yeah, it's basically noticeable how the fact that, you know, Mario and Sonic did recently tackle through... Um, you know, Harmony Quest is doing back into uh, February 2018 because of, you know, Olympic Winter Games, as far as I'm aware, from the uh, Nepal Gene 2018. Speaking of which, though, is that, um... Well, I don't know what to think about that, to be honest, Piglet, because, um... Well, there's not much else you can tell. Well, besides the actual uh, main plot of the game, as we, um, continuously stated this earlier, um, basically what happens is though, the main plot in this game is the fact that, um, well obviously, well, well in, um, you know, Discord is actually wandering around in the forms of, um, Twilight Sparkle's, uh, Kingdom Castle, and basically what happens is though, is the fact that, um, every time when he actually walks around and able to actually keep on looking at the books to able to see the description for it, but he somehow come across into this special kind of book, which basically what that does is that it just turns every single locale, especially noticeable with the forms of um, the actual pony film town, completely colorless. And as a result, um, it's up to the main six to able to actually restore as many colors as possible before pony film is saved. So. Yeah, because again, it does remind me of the exact same plot of how it does the informs of um, Paper Mario Color Splash from Nintendo Wii U. Except the fact that, well, it's not about uh, kidnapping stuff, it's just basically we have to save uh, the entire town after all. Which, even though know, that might be sound as well. Kind of almost similar to that, but, um, you know, it's not on the, um, the Wii U sadly, because, you know, the Wii U is still uh, pretty poorly when it comes to uh, the selling points at this rate, because even then, um, still Nintendo Switch is doing so, so well, especially noticeable how the fact that it's going way better than the likes of the Wii U sales department wise, because not just the forms of the actual performance thems themselves, and yeah, if you couldn't tell already, that uh, as you can see on screen, that uh, we have to constantly gonna have to do a jump cut a lot in this particular playthrough, because well, as you expected, that the pop-up adverts uh, usually just pops up every single time when we actually finish the main levels, and pretty much for a sake of everything. So, that was level up uh, Rainbow Dash now, so that her level up body forms of Rainbow, and we're pretty sure we're actually on to level 2 at this rate, but in forms of um, the main 6 at this rate. So even then, now let's go ahead and do the next level out of the way. I'm assuming the next level we're going to be heading to at this point is... Uh, let's do this level. Or in this case, in this particular section. So in this case, let's go ahead and select Applejack. So, hopefully everything else will be, uh, just as well. Well, except the fact that the challenges itself, it still is pretty much exactly easier. Just like how it does in Harmony Quest, because again, target audience is kids, and I believe this game is aged from... Um, 6 to 8, much like how it does in the forms of, um, Harmony Quest, for that mind you. But, hey, uh, this is something. Okay, so... So I guess, um... Again, there's not much else we can actually say about this. Well, besides the fact that we already got about... 
Um, six more days left, specifically on the forms of the 10th of January, or July, sorry. I kept on thinking of uh, 2019 for some reason, but that'll be interesting later. Well, mainly until whenever when we get to that point, in the forms of um, uh, six months' time, or naturally speaking as such, or maybe five months. Yeah, it's probably five months for the better. Anyways, though, um, oh yeah, every single um, character, mainly the main six, usually performs a double jump as you expected. But Pinkie Pie can actually perform triple jumps, which you yeah, know that might actually counts as like, you know, mega bounce and stuff like that. So yeah, I might have misleading, but in forms of the um, the actual description for it. But again, I do apologize for that because it's been a long time since I've actually gone through the actual Mind of the Pony uh, uh, Friendship is Magic stuff. Which, even then though, that might be sounds a little bit more of a uh, misleading for that point. But of course, yet again, but it forms up whenever we try to watch those specific episodes in the forms of Season 8 at this point. Once again, the actual stupid copyright claims just keep on uh, noticing that the fact that the copyright issue is still present there, which even then though, I found it a little bit more uh, ex exaggerating, just like how it does in the forms of from before. But anyways though, so now we've actually accessed to the windmill section. And um, speaking of which, let's go ahead and get into that. And of course, pick my favorite um, lovely wife, but in forms of rarity. I know some fans were some fans out there might think that Spike usually has a crush on Rarity, but since I have my own version of Rarity, see then I, I always love her so much. Anyways though, enough about that. Um so anyways though, um, yeah, as you can tell, if you run onto the mud, you slow down temporarily. Pretty banana, that, that's how it usually happens if you walk on not only uh, mud, but I believe also puddles as well. So, how, how in the world do the puddles do you actually just make you slow down like that? I know it sounds a little bit weird, mind you, but it's kind of inconsistent. Well, not to be inconsistent, but as you expected from any, uh, um, stage, um, I'm supposed to be like that, but I think it's kind of a, uh, kind of a noticeable at some point. So anyways though, um, back into what I was saying from before, uh, we've only got about, um, you know, six more days left until, um, Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy will be about to be releasing on the Xbox One, PC Steam, and of course Nintendo Switch. So even I know that things can get a little bit more excitement when it comes to, um, yeah, for a long period of time, that finally that Crash Bandicoot was now finally makes a return on Nintendo console ever since, well, uh, Mind Over Mutants, which even then, no, that I wasn't really too, uh, you know, thrilled about the rebooted uh, Crash Bandicoot franchise, but still. Speaking of which, um, we've only got about, like, uh, nine more days left until Captain Toad Treasure Tracker on Nintendo Switch and it forms up Nintendo 3DS as well. So those two versions will get ourselves to release. So, yeah, we might actually looking forward to until we're able to actually do a redo let's play of the forms of Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, mainly on the Switch version, because even then, no, okay, so we got ourselves to the next level, which actually requires Fluttershy to actually explore then. But, I'm afraid for this point, folks, it's basically noticeable of the bronies out there, for those of you who are a fan of this particular franchise, including ourselves included, um, we're going to end things off here, I'm afraid, uh, for this point. So yeah, join us next time, or let's play My Little Pony Rainbow Runners for the iOS slash Android devices, which, yes, this game also came out on the Android phones, for those of you who actually just might as well miss that at, at one point. So, speaking of which, is that next time we have to continuously go in through different sections and restore as many colors as possible until we're able to actually restore them during time. So yeah, see you guys next time for that. Yeah, later, fellas. See you guys then. I really love the aesthetics viewpoint.